Yuck Mala! Yuck Mala! Welcome back, my friends, to the Cult Film Showdown. I am your host, 8th Dan Stanadu, and I am truly pleased to be joined by my good friends, including Jack Hall. Hey, gentlemen, start your octagon. Mine is electric, like your personality, Stan. Woohoo! All right, James, James Carter. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad to be here, and this week I will be known as Jim Jim Kata. <laughs> Jim Jim Kata, yes. Ah, uh, yes, and Nick Nick Boxer. Greetings and salutations. I may or may not have just sneezed. Mm, <laughs> yes. <Keep posted. laughs> yeah. Please do, please do, please do. Well, this is season... I'll leave it to your imagination. Mm. Clever. <laughs> the sneeze will be available only to our Patreon supporters. <laughs> <laughs> it's just your imagination. I am trying to lose an era of mystery. That's right. Well, you would. You, you're eluding just as much mystery as this one does. So it's like a, season seventeen. Enter the octagon. Two octagon harder is is the season. Buckets of Blood is the is the season concept, and Gore Gore Girls is the movie. And so Buckets of Blood was the concept where I thought that let's let's have something gory, let's have something bloody, and and I gave us Gore Gore Girls. Whether that was a good thing or a bad thing, well, I guess we'll find out. But more to the point, Nick Boxer gets to explain it. Okay, uh, Gore Gore Girls is uh, uh, Gore Gore Girls is a movie. Um, a, a fancy detective is hired to investigate a string of stripper murders. Uh, the rest of the movie is just him walking around, throwing money at people, asking questions, interspliced with extremely long stripper scenes, and uh, uh, extremely long hookers getting killed uh, with gooey, not great uh, special effects. Uh, and it all ends in a big, live, uh, exciting uh, stripper contest. It was fun. I can't say anything else about it because that's all there is there. It's a <laughs> that's Earth pretty much it. This it's, movie, it's it's <laughs> what it is. <laughs> it's it's not as actually high, high on plot. <laughs> <laughs> no, they do an enormous amount of wandering around. It, uh, it's funny because you know we we talked we talked last episode about how hot stuff really managed to like overwork the whole selling selling hot items concept. Well, this one really managed to overwork the exact same stripper gets killed, fancy pants detective like goes makes a few fancy pants ass comments, and <laughs> we rinse lather repeat about eight times. You know. <laughs> It's are the, they're uh, the would you consider them go go dancers as opposed to uh, that is, I mean I guess that's what like, Ghost is, is a play on so yeah yeah, yeah that's yeah. what hey Christopher <laughs> Gordon Lewis considers I, honest to God didn't catch that go 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 yeah it's it's interesting because this is one of those movies that I that I chose just because because I really wanted to get some Herschel Gordon Lewis in here um and I and I wasn't really sure what to expect and I just and, and I don't know if maybe I didn't expect more <laughs> I guess ultimately it's Any, just really slow it, it is really slow and that's the problem it, it's it's not that it doesn't deliver on the gore it does. I mean, the special effects aren't great, but what do you expect, really? But it, it delivers on the gore. It, it delivers on the nudity. It delivers on the things. Like, up front, you would think, yeah, this should be perfect. But but everything is so slow. Like, when the reporter character talks to the fancy pants detective, they'll just sit on the couch and talk to each other for, like, five minutes of, like, <laughs> nothing, you know... <laughs> Not advancing the plot, not doing anything, just making little comments at each other, and it's just like the dialogue's not good and stuff like that. It does have some dark humor to it, the movie in general, but like the dialogue is boring, so it's just slow. I think the thing is, is that it thought that it was so much more clever than it actually was in his dialogue. 
100% for sure, because I listened to the commentary track with Herschel Gordon Lewis, and yes, he thinks his dialogue is very clever, and everything he did was very clever. Yeah, and I, and I think that was the problem for me is that I I really wanted to come into this and be and be like, oh, this is this is going to be fun, this is going to be awesome, and then and then yes, it is way too much of the same thing over and over again. And then I was super excited because Henny Youngman's in this, and I love Henny Youngman, and then he's just a really freaking annoying character. <laughs> Did he even tell a joke? Yeah. He did. He did at the, like, not in the main scene, but, like, once he got up on stage, oh, he started yeah. telling yeah. jokes. But the problem was the audio mix was so bad, I actually couldn't hear most of them. Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty brutal. Uh, he he denied ever being in this movie, mind you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I, I can't blame him in that regard. Take my age. He got paid. He worked one day and got paid 500 bucks. Maybe that Herschel Gordon Lewis track did give me some uh, some uh, some. <laughs> That's a good trivia. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I you know, and it's funny because like I this is a movie that I may potentially deny having ever watched. So. Like... <laughs> what a coincidence. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I didn't get paid five hundred dollars. Yeah. <laughs> that. The eyeball squeezing. <laughs> That's right. That was real. That was a real animal's eyeball. Oh, nice. There you go. <laughs> That's that's the only special effect that didn't look bad, and there's a reason for that. <laughs> yeah, this one at 95 minutes, it would have been way better at 75. It's it's funny that the, like the the gory spots were like there's a couple of them that were like look away gory for me, and but like the the rest really? of the movie was like look at my phone boring. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so, you know the, like those gory ones like. I think all the special effects look so fake to me that they weren't go- look away goring. And and I'll be honest with you, this is the season I was hoping that this movie would win the season because I already had three films picked out, maybe four, like oh. that I was looking forward to and uh, to, to narrowing down to one for for this season, this buckets of blood. You like I said, I, p- I picked this. Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think that's... we know. <laughs> <laughs> this is not beating for your height only. <laughs> it's, it does seem likely that we're going to the Philippines in some way, shape, or form. <laughs> I, I, I hope I hope that one of your gory films was shot in the Philippines. That's all <laughs> I can say. <laughs> no. Oh God. You know how many movies in the past uh, the past couple of weeks I've looked up to see if they shot anything in the Philippines? <laughs> Philippines, does that mean I can resubmit uh, Raw Force? Because I'd love to watch that again. <laughs> oh, yeah, no doubt. I, I, like to see Raw Force. I actually bet it might score even higher this time. <laughs> it might. <laughs> it's this, like, oh, yeah, I don't know. This, I don't know how much more we have to say about it. Probably nothing. This movie would have been way better with Cameron Mitchell, though. Would, yeah. I mean, if Cameron Mitchell had played the detective. Um, oh, God, actually, yeah. if Cameron Mitchell had played all of the parts, <laughs> um, I, I think it would have rocked. <laughs> <It would've> rocked. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I'm fine Cameron going Mitchell to Cameron Mitchell and those fancy pants? Oh, yep. done, gold. done uh, 15 years later with much hotter women. Uh, that would have helped. Um, <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of things would have come together there. Mm-hmm. Who was this? Who was this guy? He's like the he's like an accountant. Um, <laughs> the lead <laughs> guy here. <laughs> Frank Cress, whoever that is. Yes, <laughs> right. They were ready to to launch him as a franchise. <laughs> next, next Bond. <laughs> All right. Well, let's go to scoring then. In our search for the ultimate B movie, we rate each film in five categories. None of which is, which is objective quality, and none of which is how many times you repeat the same word in your title. Our first category is called schlock appeal. We start with Stan. I'm, I'm of two minds on this. I'm, it, it, it is somewhat schlocky. There's no question about it. But I'm a little bit pissed off because I expected more. So I, I'm only going a four. Yeah, this the, this is like a schlock movie masquerading as. A mainstream movie, uh, yeah, it, it's not high, it's got the title, it's got the appeal, a little bit of appeal, but the actual product, they're selling you something that it's not. Uh, four. 
Wow, fours all the way around so far because, yeah, I mean, it's just not – it's schlocky, but, I mean, it's just – it doesn't have the energy that that we see out of the great schlock fests that, that, that makes us laugh so much and everything. It just lacks the energy, so four is what I got. Uh, I'm I'm going to be a bit more generous. Uh, I think that uh, uh, I I think the title, I think the the pitch, I think uh, this in Times Square in 1972 would have felt pretty sleazy. Uh, so I'm going to go with a six on this. It felt sleazy now. That's the one thing. It, <laughs> it sleazy still feels the exact same. It felt just as sleazy as any 70s porn that you've seen. You know, it's it's just as sleazy as the Devil and Miss Jones or or. Deep throat, if or if they behind were the green holding, door, uh, any of these things. They were holding congressional hearings on uh, on violence in movies. They would have shown clips from this. Yeah. Uh, all right, more heart than the budget, and I don't know, eight bucks. I don't. I, I don't. I, I think it was guess. sixty-four. Sixty-four thousand. I think was what. Uh, wow. What was said That's in the commentary cool. track? So that seems like too much. Um, I, I guess I, I. I mean, it's mostly shot probably at the same club. And the same apartment building. Um, they paid Henny Youngman five hundred dollars, but obviously he didn't. Uh, he didn't care to uh, to say that he'd been in the movie afterwards. Uh, God, it's it's a hard one, but five because it's it's just so damn boring. Um, yeah, this to me for uh. It plays like an episode of Kojak with nudity and violence spliced in. Um, this seems like uh, Herschel Gordon's uh, 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 application to direct TV. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I I can't say anyone's really trying. Um, three. Herschel Gordon Lewis uh, disappeared into the uh, into the advertising business for 10 years after this movie um and in this one he's pretty much just like repeating special effects from from other movies you know using a mask again and just shooting it from a different angle and and that type of thing so uh six my point Great. being that it was a cheap movie and it's herschel gordon lewis and it had gore effects yeah there's that like a 30 year gap between directing credits that is that is, uh, we don't often see that. Uh, yeah, I think I think that he really, I think he, and I think the lead thought he was doing a thing. I think uh, I, I think he was trying to create a character. Uh, I don't think he was, uh, and I'm not. It wasn't a successfully interesting character, but I think <laughs> he was really trying to build something. Uh, so I'm going to go five. Uh, what the fuck moments? You know, there's there's a few things that that are just that just really stand out to me. Like it, the music is is god awful. Like at the beginning, I thought, is this a beat poetry reading or a horror movie? Because it was just like boop, boop, and and then near the end, there's like there's a woman getting mutilated and marching band music is playing, and I'm like, what the hell are you thinking? Um, there's a few really odd things, like like our. Uh, our uh, Abraham Gentry character has a cat at the beginning, and I believe that he puts the cat in the cupboard before he goes to answer the door. Yeah, the dresser door. Drawer. <laughs> you put it in the dresser drawer. Because who doesn't do that, really? Yeah. Um, Somebody knocks on the door, that's what you do with the cat. Yeah. <laughs> like, there's a, there's a few things that I, that I kind of like. I, I like the blood in the gum bubble um, part of the death. There's, there's like, he's... The meat tenderizing of the ass, which maybe that's a fetish. I don't. I don't know. Like, I didn't realize you could cut off nipples to get milk. Um, it, it, but then there's another couple things. Like Henny Youngman during the entire scene that he that he was acting. I wonder what he was looking at because he wasn't actually looking at the other character. I'm pretty sure he must have been looking at the lines off screen because he was not paying any attention to. Like his eyes were all over, um, and then finally, acid made in Poland. So, not not too much, but I'll I'll give it a four. Uh, wow, 
I can't. You mentioned the milk, but you didn't mention that one breast was uh, regular and one was chocolate. <laughs> this I is think where I we talk that. about the dark humor. This is where <laughs> Herschel Gordon Lewis is like, nobody should be taking this seriously. They shouldn't have been offended. Clearly, it's done for comedy. <laughs> it was a really, really gross scene that didn't work because it was so gross. <laughs> or the humor was so bad, I don't know. Uh, you also have an ending where the good guy ostensibly lets the bad guy go, and she just trips, falls down, and ends her life with getting her head run over by a car. That seemed like a very random way to uh, end it. Um, yeah, I, I mean, what's... What's... What's not WTF? The meat tenders, uh, tenderizer scene, although it had tons of blood, didn't strike me as like all that like uh, efficient of a torture device. Or was that? I don't know. It that didn't play for me. Um, yeah, but I'm the WTFs are definitely there, so I'll go. I'll go with the seven actually. And I'll give it a six on the WTFs. I do think the meat tenderizer thing, I did not realize that being hit hard enough in the ass enough times would cause you to die. I did not realize. <laughs> now, wasn't she slashed on the throat it'll first? Because I was thinking the same thing you were. No, I, I don't remember a, slow, a throat slash first. I mean, uh, I'm, I rewound. I watched it a couple times, like I say. I rewound once during this scene to see. And he, I think he, doesn't he... Um, shove her head in the oil, and then different girl. Different, different girl. girl. Same, same set. Different same scene. girl. Same set. Well, they're all the same. Set. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Same scene. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Okay. Yeah. They had two sets, like you say. Um, everything was shot in those two sets. Well, uh, nevertheless, um, I'm pretty sure he didn't cut her. I'm pretty sure the death was because she was still crying. When he started slapping her with the meat tenderizer, she which was actually was the most, most effective part uh, part of that scene, but I couldn't come up or, with a reason she was still standing there after he got the the meat uh, cleaver, unless she had been slashed first. I had to say she, he wasn't even barely holding her down. Oh, I know, I know. <laughs> Especially once you know who the killer actually is, it makes even less sense. Um. Yeah, uh, yeah, six is about good. I mean, I think the biggest WTF for me probably in the end, besides you know the idea of uh, of uh, bleeding from your ass causing death, um, and I don't mean this actually. Well, bleeding from your rectum, I suppose that could cause death. <laughs> I think about it. I, I'm but pretty sure that way. that you've belabored the uh, the ass and the, the, the bleeding. <laughs> Have I mentioned that there was ass? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've mentioned it's a huge WTF. Other than that, the the fact that uh, that the lead character here is uh, has every woman in the world is coming on to him, and he has absolutely no interest in any of them. And I'm wondering why any of them are attracted to him. Like, <laughs> That's a pretty strong WTF for me. Is that, so. is that the same actor who played the psychiatrist on MASH? Because that's what it looks like. <laughs> oh, God, it's not the same one, but no. it totally it looks, looks like him. Yeah, it does look like him. Uh, I, you know, it's the it's the kill, the death scenes are like the WTF, but there's such a long walk between them uh, that it, I, it hurts the score for me. Because there's no, there's no um, like, it's not an ebb and a flow. It's an ebb and a stop completely. And, and you weren't lying when you say walk between them. That's exactly what <laughs> oh, yeah. they do. They walk between they walk. them. They walk. They have a sit. <laughs> they, uh, <laughs> they, they occasionally get in a car. They literally did. They would sit. They sat on that couch and just talked to each other <laughs> like three times for so long. Uh, even just, even the, when they're when they're focusing in on the girls dancing, even those went on too long. <laughs> I'm like. <laughs> Like yeah, if we took away the dancing things, what? How long would this movie be? Forty-five minutes? <laughs> Might be forty-five really good minutes. <laughs> yeah, um, I actually enjoyed the fact that uh, you know the stripper scenes went on so incredibly long. You got bored of them, even the one with no nudity. Yeah. <laughs> the the fi- final one where it's hair flip, hair flip. 
Uh, I don't know what the hell this thing is because we're not seeing nothing. <laughs> we don't see ankle in that strip team scene. <laughs> <laughs> It's it's like the the Muslim movie. For... And it's still like ten minutes. That is that is actually a pretty stern WTF. Now that you mention it, that last that last strip teasing shows nothing, shows nothing. And yes, she wins the contest. But uh, I think, I saw you, you think that actress would have uh, wanted to be nude because she was clearly like I can't only imagine that if sixty four thousand dollars were spent on the movie, sixty thousand was spent on cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm only going to go with a four memorable moments I'm going to say that there isn't any um, uh, this is this is entirely forgettable because it's so repetitive uh, one yeah th- this is this is the one in like any cult director's filmography is like on the bottom of every list just because he, he doesn't have enough of film to push it off. Uh, completely forgettable. Uh, two. Okay, there's a scene where this girl gets hit with a mallet in the ass until she bleeds to death. <laughs> and it's clearly that this just isn't believable. I mean, that was so <laughs> marinara on it. Like, yeah, I, well, clearly, I think, it was, I think it was clearly it was jelly. I think it was raspberry jam. jam. Um, I think it was raspberry jam or strawberry jam that they were just you know, that slapping was the first on there. One that it looks so ridiculous. Mar- marinara. I, I, I kind of zoomed in just to check that out. <laughs> okay, so it's definitely marinara. Yeah, tomato okay. chunks. Or marinara combined with jam. Uh, one or the other. And I will never forget that because I, I looked at it just like, this is the most stupid, ridiculous death in the history of film. So I won't forget it. But it's only one thing. So four. I yeah uh this one's uh this one's got no glue uh at all for me. Uh I'm going to go with a two to raise a concept. Uh, I'm pretty sure that um that it's it, that it's not very crazy. I mean, this is Herschel Gordon Lewis who's done so many of this you know a bunch of these kind of things and it's just like it seems like it's just taking pieces of his own work and just laying it out there. So I, I just can't say that that, it, that it's super crazy, so I'll only go with a three. No, I, I actually said before, I think this is an audition tape to direct television. Uh, you know, he put the necessary things in to get funding, but the rest of it's just sort of him trying to be normal, I think. Uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's pretty weak in the concept. I mean, it's just basically somebody's killing strippers and a detective is trying to find them. That's it. Combined with a lot of gore and a lot of nudity. That's it. Like it's it's a really paper thin everything. So two. I, I'd object to you calling that music, but other other than that, I agree one hundred percent. I I think uh I'm going to be slightly more uh, generous. Uh, based on that, that pitch is probably 200 movies that were made in the 80s and 90s. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so the, this uh, this blazed the trail uh, <laughs> of, of 77 uh, Shannon Tweed films. Uh, <laughs> so I'm going to give it a, all the way up to the and sky 69, high. And 69, truly strained. Boom. That's right. See what it did there? <laughs> nice, nice. Uh, four for me. All right, that brings us to the end, and that gives this film a surprisingly high 39 out of 100. <laughs> Puts it Too right bad. behind the great Rupert and Damn right it. ahead of Jocks. <laughs> and it's so weird. See, like, and the thing is, when I'd I was... rather watch Jocks. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah, I think I'd watch Jocks. What... When I was choosing this, it's like, and you go to Wikipedia, and it's just like, well, the film's violence received much criticism. It's currently seen as Herschel's most praised film. I was... Oh, it is. Yeah. Like, this is... It's much beloved. Yeah. The two guys in the commentary track with with Herschel Gordon Lewis were practically blowing him the whole time. 
<laughs> and and I think that was it. Like I just I just expected so much. This is like a state park. This is my state park, where it's just yes. like, I came and, I, and it was just like, oh, this is going to be so good. And then it's just like, shit, this is so boring. <laughs> you know. And, I really wanted this season to win. Yeah, and, and, and it's just like, I don't, like, there's other things that I could have put in, but they would have been Herschel Gordon-Lewis, probably, just because he's Herschel Gordon-Lewis. So. Yeah, it makes me wonder now if I was to, it, it certainly doesn't make me want to go through his filmography. No, you know, I'm sure there's some that are, would score higher oh, than this, but I'm sure, I'm sure there's others. Percent. I mean, ten thousand mania or oh, what? The maniacs one. There's, yeah, ten thousand maniacs. Yeah. Yeah, no, that uh, that has to be insane. Uh, I, I I don't know what it is with Gore Girls. I I think it's just maybe well, well respected for the budget effects. Maybe I don't know. I didn't think they were that effective, but. Uh, you can see why it would cause a sensation in its time, you know, if any theaters would actually show it. But yes, he yeah. he wanted it known in the commentary track. He's like, no, we weren't. He wanted it known in the commentary track. He's like, we weren't making these movies for kids. I want that known. <laughs> I want that known. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we didn't put a rating on them, but that didn't mean it was okay for kids. <laughs> because you know, you're 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 a parent, and you're and you're like, huh? What should we go to see? It's 1972, Gore Gore Girls is available to the theater. Yep. I'll bet you Junior will be really, that, that'll be a movie for him. Well, it's like uh, Blood Sucking Freaks when that got in a lot of trouble. And Lloyd Kaufman was like, so we got in trouble with the with the uh, MPAA because we put in the unrated version after give, after saying we would, after give, <laughs> doing a, a, an R-rated cut. But we put into the theaters the actual unrated version, and then some lady takes her kid to the movies and gets upset. And he's like, "Why are you upset? You took your movie. The movie's called Blood Sucking Freaks, and you were like, <laughs> perfect family entertainment." <laughs> ah, all right, Jim, let's do some business. All right. Well. You, we would love it if you subscribe to our show on pod, uh, your favorite podcast app and on YouTube. And uh, you can also support us on Patreon. We are now posting exclusive episodes on Patreon uh, that will not be available anywhere else uh, unless we're able to do a box set eventually. There's like a, a B-side rarity set eventually. That, uh, what are those exclusive episodes of? Uh, if you if you tuned in for our, our episodes on uh, shorts and TV episodes, uh, we'll be continuing those as Patreon exclusives. Uh, so we'll be watching. Uh, so uh, the first one up was uh, will be or was. Uh, I don't know what the t- tense to use. Uh, was uh, an episode of the A Team, and uh, we've got uh, more coming. Um, and uh, we're also on Instagram at the Call Film Showdown. And we are sponsored by WeTalkPodcast.com, the home of the Octagon. And We Talk Podcast has a Facebook and they have a Twitter. All right. Well, Season 17, Enter the Octagon 2, Octagon Harder, carries on with Jack's attempt to knock off the uh, Filipino mastery of of the Octagon Harder seasons. And uh, this is the do-over season with Silent Night, Deadly Night 2. So... Yeah, well, let me happened. tell you, if, if if there's a movie that can do it, it might just be Silent Night, Deadly Night 2. Guess we're going to find out next time. That's uh, But on, honestly, I just I just want it to be better than Gore Gore Girls. <laughs> you just, just say it. You just want to apologize to us. Just say it. Just tell us you're sorry. It's one of those cases, though, where it was probably going to go in at some point, so it, it, it happened. Well, it- yeah, and it did. Yeah, it did. <laughs> so, it, it's enough. a thing. Yeah. All right. I got nothing more to say about it. So, for Jim and for Jack and for Nick, I am your host, 8th Dan Stanadu, and thanks for listening to the cult film Showdown. A maniac is on the loose. A killer whose lust for blood threatens more than the lives of every pretty girl. Never in the history of motion pictures have there been scenes such as these. We caution parents that no one under 17 will be admitted. The Gore Gore Girls. Unquestionably, you'll be talking about it for years. 
Those who have seen the Gore Gore Girls agree it's the most brutal, the most outrageous, the bloodiest film ever produced. Starring Frank Kress, Amy Farrell, Penny Youngman. Special effects by the same perverted madmen who brought you Blood Feast, 2000 Maniacs, the gruesome twosome. Nothing, nothing has ever stripped your nerves as screamingly raw as the Gore Gore Girls in startling color. The Gore Gore Girls. The Gore Gore Girls. <laughs>